ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for me to call upon Daphne Rice Woodward, the global, the global director of Inca, to deliver his well uh, his keynote address on the next generation influencer and in content marketing. Well, Inca has established operations in 25 markets, delivering campaigns for Group M and WPV's largest clients. Daphne joined the group in 2013. focusing on the commercial development of new digital media propositions including video advertising native advertising and addressable tv also do stay with us as on the other side we've got rajesh ramakrishnan coming up next speaking about the power of influence through brand building with this i'd now like to call upon uh, dapit on the stage and screen thank you so much uh, for joining us today over to you Thank you very much. Thank you for the thank you for the welcome. Uh, and can I just check if everyone can hear me and see my screen that's being shared at the moment? Yes, we can. We can, David. Perfect. Thank you so much. Well, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Dabs, the global managing director for Inca, and, and we operate across 30 markets globally. And it's an absolute pleasure to speak with you all today. And thank you for the invitation to to do so. I'd like to kick us off first of all just by congratulating everyone on the publication of the Influencer Marketing Report 2021. I've had a sneak preview, downloaded it via the QR code. It's full of great information and opinion pieces and how to win in the influencer space today and in future. So I'd like to take some time today to talk about the direction of the industry uh, and what the future may hold for the creator economy. If we look back just 5 years, I think the influencer marketing world would be unrecognizable from where it is today. And with the pace of change, I expect the landscape to evolve even more in the next five years. So the trends that I talk about today will be near future trends, uh, which we at Inca are very excited to bring to life for our agency partners and our clients around the world. So to kick us off today, uh, a brief evolution of the modern influencer marketing landscape and what has brought us here. Now, much changes in this industry, but certain principles stay consistent. Key opinion leaders have been part of the marketing mix for almost a hundred years. Why? Because marketers have long understood that the endorsement from authentic voices leads to an increase in trust, attention, and audience engagement. And this remains a guiding principle in in everything that I'll talk about today, and everything really that's in the in the report that you guys will be receiving uh, from today and onwards. And effective influencer or KOL marketing strategies. start with high quality authentic content that reflect the brand and provide a strong brand message vehicle to consumers. Now moving more into recent history, the rapid rise of connectivity and social platforms powered by technology of course has really poured rocket fuel onto this industry. First of all, it's re- reframed the definition of fame and by extension influence, uh, and it's also democratized the ability to become influential and the ability to create a high volume of high quality content. Today each one of us creates and consumes 16 times more content data than we did just 10 years ago. And where attention goes, advertising dollars surely follow. And as an effective way to reach and engage audiences on social platforms, it's no surprise to see the increased interest from marketers and the increased budgets that we're seeing dedicated to influencer marketing. Our social platforms were originally formed so that people could stay connected or create new connections online. These social platforms quickly developed a monetization model around this as global audiences flocked to consume their free services. This gave birth to the era of paid social advertising, laying the foundations to reach targeted audiences at scale in social environments. And of course, this rapidly became a multi-billion dollar industry. that virtually every brand invests into today. Now a recent trend that we've seen in influencer marketing is the adoption of paid media tactics into influencer campaign delivery. Addressing audiences at scale on social platforms with engaging content through the authentic voice of the creator is now a common tactic in influencer campaign delivery. This has led to really strong results for clients and delivery of greater range of outcome, more mid funnel campaign metrics. So this is a key trend that's likely to gather pace and we'll see budgets for influencer activity continuing to grow as planners consolidate budgets for both content creation and distribution across social. But where else do we see evidence of this as a growing trend? Well, we need to look uh, no further than the social platform giants themselves. For the first time we're seeing these platforms recognize content creators as strategically important for them for the future of their platforms. Returning users are their lifeblood. 
And there is now a recognition that quality content that influencers create provides the incentive for audiences to continue to open their social apps on their smartphones day after day, time and time again, every day. Creators are now being rewarded for the content that they produce and not only for brands that they endorse, but across the board. And for me, this is way overdue and it provides the creators with the incentive and the reward for the audiences that they attract and the content they create. They are independent mini publishers after all, and we will see this trend continue to grow. We have a white paper on this very subject coming out um, very soon and will be available on the Inca website. So clearly boosting of content is increasingly important and social platforms are leaning into their creator community like never before. But why stop at distribution across social channels? Logically, especially in markets the size of say India's, why not utilize creator content outside of the wall gardens of social platforms? Securing usage rights to content opens up a host of possibilities for marketers to reach audiences in new and engaging ways across media channels. And this also paves the way for us to deliver addressable influencer content. Now, what do I mean by addressable influencer content? For example, by delivering creator content programmatically via, say, a DSP, we can recreate social posts across digital properties, be they static images, story formats, or videos. And this in turn allows us to deliver greater scale and greater targeting uh, capabilities by ingesting first, second, and for the time being anyway, third party data. And with third party, third party cookie degradation being, uh, being ever, ever nearer, utilizing influencer content in this way can be a really strong tactic as we learn and adapt what types of audiences engage and what types of content they engage with. So to bring this to life a little bit, we can, we can do this by leveraging dynamic creative optimization and dynamic messaging. Here on the bottom right hand side, you'll see an uptick in performance as we test and learn using lots of different creatives over time. We can optimize to higher performing creatives and because we're creating a lot of content for influencer campaigns, we've got a lot more um, creative to, to test and learn at scale. There's also potential to utilize content from one market to target relevant audiences in another. And this is hugely exciting for, for me. And imagine, if you will, the value of utilizing content created in India to target the Indian audience base here in the UK. The possibilities are vast. And for me, being able to utilize our global network to create and deliver campaigns for our international clients is, is a hugely exciting prospect and can really drive business growth for our clients, which is ultimately the, the aim of the game. What's also very exciting is the functionality that addressable distribution provides. Here we have greater control over where and how we drive audiences to deliver broader actions and deeper outcomes. And this plays a really strong role in the commerce options that uh, Kunal and other speakers have spoken to um, this morning or this afternoon. Uh, and I'll circle back to this in a couple of slides time. But why stop there? Given the quality and the specifications of content created and the relatively cheap production cost, utilizing influencer generated content across connected TV and digital out of home, for instance, is becoming increasingly attractive to clients. If we can offer connected TV and digital out of home as distribution channels, alongside the more addressable social and display environments, we have a true full funnel solution for clients based on quality content, where we can deliver brand and performance based results. Now, the final piece of the jigsaw I'd like to talk about is the role that we have in playing and delivering sales and attributing real business results to influencer investment. As mentioned before, there's been a sprint towards delivering e-commerce and social commerce outcomes in recent times across the media landscape. At Inco, we talk about delivering creator commerce, which is where we aim to make all creator content shoppable wherever possible. The APAC region is absolutely on fire in, in, this, in this sector and leading the way in this respect. And there's great insight into this uh, within the report. So uh, please do look out for that section in, in particular. Very, very interesting content there indeed. Now, integrations with shopping platforms such as Shopify, WooCommerce, et cetera, alongside the social platform shops themselves will be a growing trend over the 18 months, the next 18 months. And I predict that we will see many more brands in industries that we never would have imagined become direct to consumer brands by leveraging these types of features. And we can help them make that a reality. Alongside this, there's an era where within an era where everything is on demand, we're seeing an uptick in live streaming 
podcasts, audio, and the emergence of KOS or key, op key opinion sellers. Very, very interesting um, sort of developments to, to come over the next 18 months, I'm sure. Now I'll finish where I started, talking about the guiding principle of trustworthy voices and high quality content. Creativity is the key to successful content production, and we firmly believe that creativity and diversity go hand in hand. This is a huge focus area for us, um, not just within, within INCO or within the group, but across the industry at large. And working with diverse sets of creators who reflect the societies that we work in is a cornerstone of how we continue to deliver successful campaigns for our clients, and we champion the use of di diverse creators across the industry. Building communities of Inca creators will improve our ability to remain agile and bring even more creativity to bear for our client base locally and internationally as well. Finally, guys, once again, thank you all very much for your time. Thank you for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure to, to speak with you um, today. Please do feel free to reach out to me directly if you have any questions on any of the topics discussed. My details are here on the screen and have a great rest of the day. Thank you very much, everyone.